Aji, as I'm sure Tyrrell has told you, the project is proceeding well. However, I'm sure she's neglected to mention that we have record that someone in the Peacekeepers got their hands on some of our data tied to the transport of materials for the installation. It is mostly junk, but we can't rule out that a fuse has been lit and that we may need to accelerate our plans. I've looked at the most recent report on our cluster's populations in the city, and it's very disheartening. You need to step up your efforts to get your people out of there as soon as possible. It looks like, percentage-wise, that people have been most receptive to moving to other urban centers. We should scale up our operation in Clearwater Crater. Maybe have Pogo Lear take duty and do a segment on how safe the city is. Make sure to point out the temporary housing. I don't mean to tell you how to do your job, but I think you understand the position we would be in if the peacekeepers came knocking before this is done. Sincerely, Pierce Sunspire. Okay, DT. Like... We should get started. Yes. Okay, Let's fine. get going. Okay. <laughs> Is it ethical to fuck a dolphin? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Hi! Welcome back to Calamity Cascade. Today we will be resuming our traumatic beam saber campaign, All That You Know. My name is Colin, and I am the GM. Joining me today are... Brian. Brian. Hi, and I'll be playing Hex the Bureaucrat. Why, Zach? I'm Wazak, and I'll be playing Geist, the ace. I really should just call you Zach. I keep forgetting. Yeah, it's well, either's fine. Ewan? Hi, I'm Ewan. I'm playing Loyal, the empath. And Adam. I'm Adam. I'm playing Joseph, the infiltrator. So, uh, the last set of vignettes contained a lot of content in them. So, instead of skipping forward to the next mission, which is going to be in around two weeks' time, uh, we're going to have a little bit of time to explore things together, just to kind of cap off the end of those vignettes. Loyal and Geist. If you went to investigate the explosion, uh, you would learn fairly quickly that a bombing took place at a cafe not too far from the Peacekeeper base. Uh, emergency services are already there, running triage. Um, Geist Crow, the moon devil who's with you, his expression is pretty implacable, and he pretty much leaves you as soon as he confirms there's no active threats left. Um, it's pretty bad. The entire front of the building was blown inward. The situation is chaotic, and it's hard to put together exactly what happened or who was targeted. You do, however, notice one person getting rushed into an ambulance, um, your squad mate, Hex. He is not in good shape. He's missing an arm, and he is full of holes and very, very bloodied, and he is clutching a little tattered piece of paper to his chest. Oh, shit. I think Geist will probably look over to Loyal and then run over to Hex, and maybe if he's conscious, he would talk to him, but if not, he'd probably talk to the paramedics. Is he Is he out? Hex, you can be conscious if you want. Um, you would be in, like, a very delirious state, though, as I think you have been... Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm home, but <laughs> you'd have to... He's not exactly doing a lot of talking. <laughs> that was the art there. Uh, then I guess guys still talk to the paramedics and be like, what the fuck? Is he okay? Uh, they kind of they kind of push you back and like, sir, give us some space here. Fuck. I mean, I guess I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm not gonna fight the paramedics, so I'm just gonna kind of hover and like see, probably just like watch them load him into the back of the ambulance. Yeah, are we the only like military peacekeeper people around right now? Me and guys. Um, no, definitely some of like the base guards have come over and are like, All right, what are they doing? Uh, they're skeeved out. They're like holding rifles and like looking around um, for threats, because it's not immediately clear what is going on to yeah, anyone. I want to pull guys away and say, the best thing we can do for Hex right now is to leave him in the very capable hands of the medics. We need to figure out what happened here. We need to look around. And yeah. I want to do a survey, do a wide psychic scan to see if there's any hostile entities around here <laughs> sure 
Bad vibe check. Doing a bad vibe check. I know that doesn't typically happen. I love it when long, you do the vibe check. Never know. Let's see. One. It. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> shit. Bad vibe. The vibes uh, are bad. Yeah, you kind of reach out with your mind, um, trying to figure out what is going on, and there is just so much pain and fear and confusion in the air that you cannot make anything out that is useful. Yeah, I should have expected that. Uh, <laughs> I would maybe, the only thing I can think of is that Geist might try and, like, you know, ask one of the, the Peacekeeper soldiers here what's going on, just to, from an out-of-character perspective, he might glean the fact that the general was here and got blown up if those guards know it, and if not, then he'll probably just... Probably just leave because like he, there's not really anything you can do here. Clearly, there's no active threat. This was some kind of sabotage. Yeah, I think you see like some guards interrogating uh, one of the victims. Um, some guy dressed in like a suit, private security. Um, one of the general's bodyguards, and he's kind of clutching his arm. It looks to be like damaged, but like superficially. Um, and he's like saying, "I went to the bathroom." I, to, I left the general there with the rest of the guards, and then I, there's a noise, and I came out, and it was, it was, all, it was all fucked. It was all, it was all fucked. Um, oh, shit. Loyal, we should get out of here, I think. I think this is bad. Part of me wants to, like, <laughs> look for the remnants of the bomb to figure out who made this, what, is, <laughs> what happened here. But... Yeah, I don't want to be around the screaming minds surrounding me at this moment. No, it's so distracting, isn't it? <laughs> it's <Yeah>. exhausting. God, <laughs> shut up already. Got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> Those were uh, shows up. Words. Who died? Jeez. <laughs> oh, wow, this is crazy. Man. Where were you guys? I was at a bar. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Just in case you're wondering where I was. Just a confetti flies off his shoulder. <laughs> Look it off. Um, yes, so we will skip ahead to that night. Uh, Joseph, you arrive back on planet pretty late, um, and you do, kind of as you mentioned, your vignette, check the news, and you get it basically all confirmed that that did in fact happen. Um, <laughs> everything you saw, and almost to pardon. Uh, well, you did take part in it in a way, but do you report to Nyla immediately or later? <laughs> I think I do immediately. Excellent. So you are, this is kind of at your crate, uh, which is mm -hmm. the designated meeting place. Um, <laughs> you send the signal to Nyla and you meet her there. She looks exhausted. Um, you don't get the impression you woke her up at, at like, like maybe 3 a.m., 4 a.m., whatever it is now. Um, Whitecliffe is there and she seems very passive. The usual like kind of judgmental um, glare looking down on you. Um, and Nyla just kind of grabs her head and says, do you know what happened? Yes, I was there when it went down. Do you know that? Uh, wait, what do you what, what do you mean you were there? I was with Goldhouse. I saw them pull the trigger. Wait, they, they did this? Yes. She, like, grabs her head. Says, okay. Um, did, did you, did anyone tell you about Hex? What do you mean? Um, Hex was, uh, he was there. He was at the restaurant? Yeah, he was, um, uh, yeah, he was, he was there. He's in the restaurant. He's, uh. Why was he there? I, <laughs> I don't know. It's a restaurant. I, maybe he was getting lunch. Maybe he was. I, I don't, we don't know. We don't know. No, we, we wouldn't know. We, no. Okay. It, he's alive. Uh, yes, Correct. he's, um, they say he's stable. But, um, it's, he, uh, he's not gonna be the, the same afterwards. Can I see him? Not now. They're not letting any visitors in. Um, to just debrief. Um, what happened? What's besides this? 
tell us uh, why why did this happen? How did they did they tell you how they got a, a bomb in to the city? So I guess I I, was, I want to tell them everything that happened, but I'm almost like forgetting they they didn't tell me anything like that, right? No, they, there was they, no. It, you didn't it was just you. show up, and here's the trigger. Yeah. Okay, yeah, basically. I mean, you didn't ask, but yes. yeah, they didn't tell you anything. Um, and if you wanted to say I tell her everything, or if you want to omit certain things, um then let me know uh i do i do just want to tell her everything and i will mention that i did meet another uh another uh sentient ai i, I presume oh. you're leaving out the stuff about contrition yes okay <laughs> so, <laughs> I, yeah the conversation me we me and milk yeah, cake had like separately i will keep to myself but yeah. everything else uh i will explain i'll just Not keep it generally just to be like they do have a sentient AI, as I predicted, on their team. I did speak with them. Seems to be that they are aiding them in their efforts. Um, Whitecliffe kind of cuts in, says, Another emergent personality. What was, what was it like? Similar to me. Almost a bit more advanced, but the body was different. Non-standard? No. Not at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone's been doing something. She kind of inhales and she almost, she like looks up like in a round. Uh, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like a paranoia, un, uncharacteristic of what you've seen in her. Mm -hmm. um, and Nyla just kind of continues to like rub her face in the way you rub your face when you're like, you're really stressed. Um, and... She says, Joseph, um, they asked you to tag a shutterbug mech. Yes. Right? You, um, I'm sure you understand the, uh, the repercussions if we go through with that and the repercussions if we don't go through with that. We are already on this course. We cannot deviate now. We can't keep afford cutting pieces off of ourselves forever. I need a timeline. I need to know you can get face to face with a decision maker, if not the person in charge of Gold House entirely, at least the one in charge of this operation. If we can gain their trust quick, then I believe I can do that. Okay. It just we like I said, we we can't keep doing this forever they're going to keep asking for more and more from you and we have to give them something real or else none of this will work it'll be for nothing so just put the tracker on cheapskate's frame it's the gold one we'll um i'll i'll put something together to mitigate the risks and uh just i don't know get some rest if you rest i and she kind of just cuts herself off and says, anything else? No, that was it. Okay. Um, obviously, I... How much have you told your squad? I've only spoken to you since I've gotten back down here. I take back what I said about reading them in on it. It wouldn't play well. Not, not with Geist the way he is right now. Not with Loyal. <laughs> um... Just uh, keep it to yourself. Um, if you need counseling or something, it can be arranged. I don't have a have a good night. I have to I have to go. I have to attend to things. Of course. And uh, she kind of stalks off, and Whitecliff kind of stays a little bit and just kind of looks at you and says, "Have you talked to any other emergent personalities besides the one you met?" It was the first one I've met so far. No. No strange sensations? Maybe a kinship when I first met Milkcake, but that is all. I see. Well, uh, keep at it, Joseph. And if you do good, maybe we can arrange for better circumstances for you. I would like that. She nods. 
and then she leaves too. So, in the coming days, if you don't know already, uh, the media gets a hold of the story. Uh, General Wave was the likely target of the attack, and he is dead. Um, gets a big funeral, as big as you can really get on Terra Brea. Um, despite his low profile to you in the pilot division, it seems he was exceptionally important at keeping the operation on Terra Brea together. His absence has created a very hard to fill vacuum, and the usual chain of command has fallen apart due to staffing issues. For the time being, the division's head, the division heads are attempting to run the show as a sort of oligarchy, with each division head, um, you know, voting on how to move forward. It has been somehow more inefficient than the way things were before, but at least it is a way forward. Your squad mate Hex has been hospitalized and is not taking any visitors at this time, but Dr. Grace uh, is attending to him personally and assures you that he will pull through, um, but that it was very close. Loyal, you mentioned you might want to visit your friend Maze after your experience. Yeah, I was torn between visiting Joseph first. I think I want to talk to Joseph first. Because what I want to talk to Maze about involves whether Joseph can help me with something or not. So I wonder, what, what, what does he do? <laughs> Where does he go <laughs> after this? What is he doing with his time directly after this, after this briefing with Nyla? Where will I find him? I think you probably find him still in his crate, just kind of mulling around, trying to keep himself busy, not think about what has just happened. I don't know if I've ever visited Joseph's crate. <laughs> I don't think you have. I don't think many have. You have a crate? Okay. I have a little crate where I, I live. There's a lot How of books around. How big is around. your crate? Where is your is crate? Is it like your Roomba dock? It kind of is my Roomba dock. <laughs> <laughs> it's is where it they like kept me when I was assassin robot, and that's where I would go in and out of my missions, and it's kind of become my little home. Is it like a shipping container, or is it like a crate like a dog would stay in, like a very small cage? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's like a shipping me. container, right, Colin? With like a little hook in pod where I would sit. Yeah, it was like, I think the way we talked about it was that it's literally in a warehouse full of cargo containers. That's like everything else there is just unused. Uh, and yours has been like converted into like a secret base of sorts, which is less <laughs> secret now. But, you know, is it secret enough that it wouldn't have surveillance on it? Can I talk to Joseph freely in this crate? Um. I would say that since Joseph has been here so long, that is up to him. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think many people would probably comb through this area, so there's no surveillance, right? Sure. <laughs> That's what I would assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. White Cliff probably has bugs everywhere in your house, dude. Are you kidding me? That's what I'm thinking, but like no active surveillance from anyone from the peacekeepers. I'm guessing oh, yeah. White Cliff is like following, but. I don't know if she's interested in anything Loyal's going to tell me. Um, but if we do want to be secretive, we might have to leave the place. Hmm. Then I don't think I would go there unless I'm like paranoid. Real balls. Are, <laughs> unless I'm paranoid that people are just listening in on my emails, too. Hmm. You can invite hmm. Joseph somewhere. He'll probably show yeah, up. I want to invite Joseph somewhere that would be remote but not overly suspicious for us to meet there what kind of place would that be maybe a restaurant where an important <laughs> yeah. official is visiting <laughs> no 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 <laughs> what happened here <laughs> no, it could be anywhere it could be you could do the the classic thing of a noisy bar um or a quiet bar rooftop a, somewhere a, a rooftop bar <laughs> rooftop bar so many bars <laughs> uh, or just like an alleyway you know there's there's so many quiet corners on terror Brand. Let's meet in an alleyway. Sure. You sending me a little message? Yeah, I would send a little ping that was just like, Joseph, can you meet me at this location? And it's just like marked on the map, and it's just some fucking alley somewhere that's like in a less populated part of the city. Uh, Joseph sends you a thumbs up emoji and makes his way there. <laughs> Joseph would walk into the scene, seeing Sunlit just floating next to a dumpster. <laughs> it's slightly. not very inconspicuous of you, Loyal, but it is nice to see you. Sometimes it's better to be away from prying eyes and ears. 
Listen, I will get right to the matter. I have a favor to ask you. I want to know if you are able to do it or not. Okay. What would you have me do? Is it possible for you to hack into the informational database that the peacekeepers have on information about clusterists and plant falsified data but make it look as if it was always there to begin with? Can I do that, Colin? <laughs> uh, you would have to roll for it. But it's something that's possible for me, right? Oh, yeah. The Peacekeeper infrastructure is really dated. Okay. I can do that for you, yeah. Is this something that would be easy for you? I don't think many things are easy, but I can definitely get it done for you. I appreciate the candid answer. Listen, you... I've been my squad mate for some indeterminate amount of time now, some weeks, months. <laughs> I know we were trying to figure out how long this has gone on earlier. So. What do you think? How long has it been? However long it feels like. I think months. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. months. I was going to say months also. Yeah, and if you're listening, please do not go through and keep track of how long I said, because it'll probably be like seven days, and that'd be really embarrassing for everyone. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't fact check us, please. Hey, I'm in a coma. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time's not real for you. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I just say that, Joseph, I've come to trust you over the time we have spent together. And I will let you know the information that I would like you to plant. I need you to falsify a bit of information about clusterists and that specifically they have memory training for, in the case that they are captured, their memories of certain critical locations that would be disastrous if it fell into the hands of the peacekeepers becomes completely erased after a certain period of time. Okay. How soon could you do this? Well, the base seems busy. They keep their hands occupied. I'll do it as soon as possible. I cannot surmise if now would be a good time or a terrible time given recent events, but I think the chaos may work in your favor. At least, I hope it will. I would definitely agree to that, Loyal. Thank you for meeting with me here today. I'll be in touch. Yes. Um, one more thing. Yes. I need something from you as well. As you know, I have gone undercover with Goldhouse and have been doing many things. At some point, people might ask me what has transpired. I will not be able to tell them the truth. You cannot reveal this to them. Sunlit is surprised by this to be asked a favor. Of Joseph, but he nods his head. He was like, I understand. This goes even for our squad mates. If Geist or Hex gets wise and has you interrogate me, I need you to tell them something else. I kind of like shift in my tank at this, like wriggle a little bit because I don't like the sound of this. This makes me uncomfortable, but I nod again and say, Okay, I will do as you ask. Good. Happy to hear it. And loyal, remember, we're almost there. I think you can feel it as well. We won't have to do this very longer. I hope you are correct. Thank you again. Of course. Joseph jogs off. Great. Um, we could... So, obviously, Joseph rolling a die is not going to automatically make your long-term project succeed loyal. But I do think you could set it up in such a way that you could proceed. Um, so, Joseph, if you want to roll an interface for me, risky I I standard. Love to. I can. We can see how that goes. Yeah, can I push myself? Use a little bit of stress because I have a lot being sure. able to use. Um, so that is that two stress? I forget two stress for another D. Okay, so then. I'm going to roll plus one D risky standard. Mm -hmm. eh. Six Ooh. Ooh. success. Yes. Um, the 
infrastructure is very bad. It is almost concerningly bad how easy it is for you to do this. It kind of maybe makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> that <the, laughs> like if the clusterists did in fact have a good enough uh, sabotage division, they could really wreak some havoc <laughs> on the peacekeeper systems. <laughs> um, and yeah, you edit the digital file on like I don't know where it would be like just general knowledge about clusterous infiltrators like buried somewhere that people rarely refer to and just edit that they are conditioned to have their memories of important events decay or they can force them to decay or something like that to give loyal that plausible deniability. Perfect. Secret clusterist info dot txt has been <laughs> breached. <laughs> Put this in the porn folder. <laughs> it's on the archives. It must not exist. <laughs> so, Loyal, did you want to have that meeting during downtime then? Yeah, or... I think so. It's more of a downtime okay. thing at this point. Cool. I'm good with that. So I think we're going to kind of fast forward a little bit. Hex, you have undergone extensive surgeries and physical therapy. Well, actually, I should ask. Loyal, did you want to talk to Geist? About what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> About how I'm the destined inheritor of the King Returneth. But putting a crown think, on my head. I think I think I would just like instead of talking to him, I would just like creep on him. <laughs> I would just watch him. Let's <laughs> 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 figure out. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> What's special about Geist? I don't want to tell him anything yet because anyone else want to do any talks before I fast forward? Uh, I think that's good. The only bit of secret information Geist has, he is keeping to himself, and I feel like it's about to become relevant. Sure. Um, Hex, you have undergone extensive surgeries and physical therapy. Um, mm -hmm. The best that money can buy, funded in part <laughs> by the corporate council. <laughs> who have provided no. the latest in prosthetics and neural regeneration techniques uh, without oh, your consent. Um, recovery has been ongoing, but you're at least able to walk around now and your new arm is functional. Um, you know, you're no longer bed bound. Um, recovery has been ongoing and you... Your arm is... It's good. It's like, it's the best that you can get, but there is a delay to it. Um, the simulated nerves just feel different and it takes a lot of physical therapy to get used to. Um, mm -hmm. And you can only imagine how difficult it is with the usual prosthetics most soldiers get and not this bougie shit. Your level two blood loss harm has been removed. Wait, no. Your level three blood loss? I forget, it was bad. It was bad. Oh, yeah, your level one blood loss harm has been removed and your level two missing arm harm has been replaced with input delay to represent the uh, weird feeling of your new arm. Um, Dr. Grace says you will get used to it, but that it'll take time and plenty of physical therapy. Um, but there's also something else about you that has changed. You have gained your first scar. Um, yeah. Ooh. Would you like to tell us what that is and okay. any immediate behavioral changes people might notice about you? I'm so curious about this. Yeah. No. Hex's first scar, I know baby's first scar, it's a very big day, is paranoia. Yeah. He no longer feels safe or like he once did. He now sees that eh, things can go bad quick and he might not know about it. So in terms of how this might manifest, he's a lot more wary. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I think that'll show more as we play. Excellent. Um, so despite the previous injury of one of your squad mates, guys, it does not seem the timetable has been pushed back at all. Yeah, um, I didn't think so. Uh, Nyla gives you the go-ahead to gather your squad and frames for the next mission from your hangar and head over to the Moon Devil Devil's hangar as she has other matters to attend to. She wishes you all luck, but uh, that's all you get from her. All right. Yeah. Um, guys still gather the team. I don't know where everybody usually hangs out off mission, presumably somewhere on base. But I don't know. But uh, Loyal shows up suspiciously fast because he was near you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Geist leads a pretty boring life. I feel like you know, Loyal would spend a lot of time watching him like tinker with his frame or like run combat drills over and over and over or like you know, go back into his little like hole in the wall apartment. Yeah, I think that would make him realize naturally, like <laughs> Yep, Geist thing is he wants to be a martyr. 
<laughs> um yeah so guys gathers everyone and basically says like you know grab, grab your frames we're uh we a special mission today all right hex we'll do. Eh, was already there and he's already in the hangar Joseph's um, gonna stroll in oh did joseph give me any indication that he was successful with his tinkering uh i imagine in that time i probably maybe sent you a message thumbs saying, up emoji yeah, that works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um so when you get to your hangar, um, whichever one of you gets there first, which I'd like to imagine is maybe all of you. Um <laughs> one thing sticks out to you, and that is there is a fifth frame in here. Uh it is hard to tell exactly what model it is. It seems to be pieced together from at least four different component sets. But you see it, a number of semi-familiar components. A repaired set of rockets that were junked from Hex's frame. The cockpit and head of the Silver Sun, which was the maze's frame you brought down on your first mission. And there were even some grafted pieces of Loyal's old broken shields. And in front of the frame, in full pilot getup, making some last-minute adjustments, is Gopher. Oh, Gopher! Gopher! <laughs> Gopher. What uh, this is our fifth buddy? <laughs> what what is this? What what the fuck is this? Gopher looks unwell, in a significant way. Um, like dark bags under his eyes. He's muttering to himself, and he says, "This is my frame." You doing all right there, bud? You you look like shit. They killed my brother. His unit got ambushed in the city, and I know you're going on a mission, and I'm going to go with you. Fuck. Has Gopher piloted a frame before? Unclear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would ask him this, like, Gopher, have you ever piloted one of these things before? I've been running Sims. I've run Sims on, on all my free time. I always thought that I could be a, a pilot one day, like you. And, the other uh, side I look to Geist at this. Geist gives like a really like it's like an uncomfortable like oh fuck kind of look. Go for listen, man. I think you know what I gotta say. Don't you say know, it. this, Geist. I'm just gonna I'm gonna make this easy for you. I'm going with you. I'm going to kill some fucking clusterists. And if you don't let me go, then I'm leaving. I'm going to go fucking stomp off into the city by myself and just start opening fire. See what I hit. Would you prefer that? Hmm? I want to like lean over to guys to be like, he's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on what district of the city. No, look, look, <laughs> it's not... Believe me when I say that out of anybody in this base, I know what you're going through. All right? It doesn't... I really can't change your mind, can I? No. You get approval from Nyla for this? No. Maybe we should let her know first. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to look to Geist. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, I'll send a little message to Nyla. <laughs> Look, uh, <laughs> Nyla like calls you immediately. <laughs> Joseph, uh, hello. What, what is this a joke? <laughs> mm, no, Gopher is here with us right now. Is this about his brother? I believe so. Fuck. Fuck. Um. He uh, no, he can't. He can't, obviously he can't go. Uh, just handle it, and she hangs up. We must detain him. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. Do we even have the resources to detain anyone anymore? <laughs> Maybe you can us. talk to him. Gopher, do you think? Do you understand how crucial you've become to our work here? Yes. But I've... We have the new repair bay. 
I, we have, I've got assistants. They know how to do most of the maintenance. I have documentation. They just need to, they need to, they just need to fucking read it and, and they'll be fine. Everything will be fine. It doesn't matter. I'll be fine. I won't be a burden or anything. I just, I need to do something. Okay. Listen I've been, to me. I've been good. I've been so good to you and your squad. And I just want, I want one thing for myself. And that's, that's this, just one mission, just, just one chance. And I'll go, I'll go back to being good gopher. I'll, I'll be running here and there. I'll bring you drinks. I'll bring you fresh drinks with ice, with ice. You know, it's not that much ice on, on, on the base, but I'll get it for you. Uh, okay. Just no, this one I don't thing. Have a mouth. <sighs> If you go through with this, if we let you go through with this, I mean, I'd say that Nyla's gonna fucking fire you, but I don't know that she can at this point. You won't feel better when you kill somebody. You'll, you'll feel worse. A lot worse. And you'll hate yourself probably for a while. I don't want to feel better. Guys looks back at the squad like well what are you, what are you gonna do <laughs> does anyone have any good speech skills <laughs> uh, <laughs> i want to try to talk him out of this i can try i have like a one in yeah. consort oh hex is good consort it's oh that's and he's our squad mate so it could do yeah. well so let's hex is gonna try talking him down from the ledge yeah, I also want to let you know, this is kind of a twisted form of the consequence you got from yeah. the entanglements. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, in case you forgot. Um, okay, I mean, if you want, what do you say? Yeah. What, what's your, what are you trying to convince him of? Go for Hex finally speaks up. I was also just the good he Herald, plugging away, helping in the back. And I didn't feel like I was doing anything. But take it for me. You can't just jump right into it. You are going to be a liability to us out there. And I'll be the first to tell you that. You're more useful to us here. And that's how we can get revenge for you. Okay. Let's, let's see it. Let's Desperate see standard. It. Come on, baby. Can I burn a fate? And a <laughs> Wrong system. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong right. system. Yeah. Uh, sort of risky standard. Hail Mary. Partial it's success. Partial. Um, so, you're going to get a desperate complication from this. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, I'll stay in the ship. What does that mean? It means like he's going to come with you, but he's going to stay in the ship. Okay. Like his, fr like his frame or like the loading ship? The... In his frame, frame in the ship. And that's not a lie. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. He mean right now, he means that. Okay. <laughs> if you um, think if you think that'll help us. He won't drop yeah. with you, is what he's saying. <laughs> Melvin, what was your brother's name? <laughs> I'm so fucking glad you asked that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, it was it was Kev. Come on. <laughs> Kev, the Vin family is my new favorite dynasty on Terra Bray. Fucking Kev. Kev Vin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I shoot Melvin in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't handle laughing. it anymore. <laughs> Listen to me, I promise you the first well fuck that, every single clusterus that I kill on this sortie, it'll be for Kev. They'll bleed. You know my reputation. Okay. But if if things go bad, I'm I'm gonna help you, okay? Look. Just we need I, I've Go ahead. Please, Go ahead. please, I'll, I'll be good. I won't, I won't jump in after you crazy. I'll, I'll be with Worthy. I'll keep him safe. And if, if, if shit gets weird or, or it's looking bad, 
I I'll be there. I'm I've been doing the Sims. I'm good at it. I I I'm really good at it. I I'm better than I thought I'd be. And, and my f and the, this frame, it's it's great. Look at it. And he points at it. It was not great. It's what all right. is our mission right now? You don't know. Mm. They don't tell us any info at all. No, you don't know anything. The only one who knows anything is Geist, and he's not saying shit. Um, mm. are you afraid to die, Melvin? No, I. It honestly sounds better. I'm gonna pull out my sidearm and aim it at his head. And I'm going to ask him again. Oh, and then I'm going to look to Loyal to see if he's lying. I like <laughs> Are you afraid to die, Melvin? Hmm. We're all die. <laughs> it's like Disco Elysium. <laughs> I like this. I'll fucking do it. <laughs> Authority. Uh, guys points the gun at his own head. Um, so partial success. Maybe I should have had you roll it. Oh well. Um, He's slightly afraid to die. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's. He's nervous. <laughs> he says he puts his forehead against your gun, and then he puts his finger on the trigger, and he says, "No, I, I want to die. I really fucking want to die, and I want to die surrounded by their fucking corpses." Guys, looks to loyal. <laughs> loyal reaches up one of the arms of his exopod to the top of the gun and just lowers it and looks nice <laughs> in the eyes. And no, says, like, was he lying? Uh, yeah. He doesn't answer. He doesn't answer. He just lowers the gun and he looks to Geist and he says, if he drops, I will cover for him. I will shield him with the Nautilus. Geist holsters his pistol and he says, look, I don't trust any of your puke assistants to touch my frame, all right? So you better not get your ass killed. And he stops yes. off. <laughs> yes, sir. Lil just gives him a sad look and goes over to his frame. Yeah, the, everything <laughs> you said was true. He's, like, fully suicidal right now. That's probably bad. Joseph's gonna walk over to him and you put his hand on his, on his shoulder. Say, welcome to the team, gopher. Nod and then walk away. Yeah, he gets back gotta to get work. You a better call sign than that. <laughs> Gun thirteen, gopher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get it on. Um, oh, also, I forgot to mention, but the ambush he's talking about has a lot of suspicious similarities to the one Kuro told you about, guys. Like, as in, like it keeps happening, or as in, it probably is the same one. Incident. It's probably the same one, given the time frame. Okay, it's very funny that. Um, Immediately in the wake of Geist being told that, Joseph went and started hacking around in our mainframe. <laughs> it is interesting, isn't it? It's a shame he got a full success on that test because I had a funny idea for a consequence. <laughs> you get funny with me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's let's go. We're going to the we're going to the Moon Devil's hangar. Mm -hmm. I'll never tell. So, um, do you tell your squad mates anything before getting there? You're going to give them the go-ahead to do so if you do want to give them some pre-briefing. Yeah, yeah, I'll basically just tell them that we're going to be we're going for a uh, joint operation with the fucking Moon Devils of all teams. Well, that seems pretty serious. That's all I think I really know about it, right? Yep, that, there is a virtue involved. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a virtue involved. I don't know which one. <laughs> Excellent. That's all we so, have? Yeah. We're going to brief. <laughs> X does not look happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Moon Devil's Hangar is housed in the same kind of area as your base of operations. Uh, it's much bigger and better equipped, though. Each frame has its own repair bay. Instead of having to share one, there's a small battalion of runners and repair crew milling about, bringing ammunition, spare parts, and cleaning supplies. Um, security is very beefed up. There are armed guards at every entrance, lookouts on top of the hangar, and even like a smaller patrol frame uh, outside keeping watch. Uh, the four Moon Devils frames are here, and I'm going to list them out. Um, the first is piloted by call sign Tapper. It's a humongous frame that has to kneel down to fit in the hangar. It almost looks to be scaled on its back, but at closer examination, it is covered in what must be hundreds of missile launchers. Um... The second is piloted by callsign Green. It's a mid-sized frame, a Soul Union standard mech uh, deployed on hundreds of worlds, kind of like 
hexes, but this one's been uh, slightly modified, but nothing that sticks out immediately to you. The third is piloted by Lieutenant Grimble. It is hard to call it a frame at all, maybe eight feet tall, nearly man size. It's equipped with a number of winches and cables, a large thruster, and a beam sword, which is nearly as big as the frame itself. And the fourth Geist you recognize as Crow's frame uh, with its infamous design. Each part of its body, cockpit included, is fully modular, able to reconfigure on the fly via a highly complicated magnetic field controlled by the pilot. The frame shifts itself on the fly according to each situation with a near limitless amount of configurations. It is unclear who designed the frame, and the most Crow has ever said is that it is a custom job. Um, And the pilots of these frames are gathered in a sitting area on the right side of the hangar. Uh, There's like a framed board with a bunch of commendations on it, some photos of the virtues that are like grainy and distant, and a printout of Pierce Sunspire's face that has been repeatedly punctured with throwing darts. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. yeah i guess um are, are our frames loaded into worthy ships still i can't imagine they're here we're just like kind of here in person uh, i think they're being loaded in okay yeah guys still uh he'll take a good look at the picture of retribution on that board of greeny virtue photos and then kind of head over to where the pilots are did you bring gopher with you uh no i think we made him stay in the car I don't want to have to tell the Moon Devils <laughs> that he's here. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, maybe little, we should. My little brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe we should bring him so he doesn't get fucking killed by them as soon as he jumps out of our ship. It probably shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, no, I think Geist would say he shouldn't come to the briefing, but we can tell him about him. Yeah. Right. You guys walk up. Uh, Crow, who I described in the vignette, is a mushroom man. Very cool looking. Um kind of leans in, places a foot on top of a coffee table, and he says, Before we begin, you should know, you will not be permitted to leave this hangar unsupervised until the end of this operation. All communications will be blocked as well. If you have anything you need to do before hearing the information, now's your chance. No. Your pilot and your infantry crews should be briefed once we're en route. You'll be responsible for getting them in order without mentioning the mission to them. Okay. Okay. The Shutterbugs received intel that the Virtue, Duty, making an extended visit to the clusterous stronghold of Clearwater Crater on the far eastern edge of the River Valley. He's doing a press tour to show off some of the new housing facilities being built to encourage clusterous to move out of the city and into the River Valley. He pulls up a map of the city, um, which I'm going to pull up for you in Foundry now. Oh you my might have God. Out. It's a very big image. I yeah. did not need to make it this big. Me and um, I drink water. It's life size. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's like half of a circle, right? That's what we're seeing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Clearwater Crater is the largest clusterous affiliated urban center on the planet, except for this city. Population 120,000, highly militant. It sits inside a large crater, making it exceptionally difficult to approach as well as to leave. The city's proximity to other cluster strongholds makes it a threat. Um, makes makes the threat of reinforcements or even other virtues likely. Our only benefit is that they won't expect us to attack such a reinforced target. The operation will begin with two precision suborbital drops. The Moon Devils will drop onto the city center and immediately engage duty, attempting to secure a kill before he has time to respond. This method proved very successful when we destroyed love during the siege of Brea City. So, he kind of points out, imagine this map was well made and clear to tell what things are. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the the red dots are anti-air emplacements, and the green dots are garrison entrances. Like yeah, can we bunkers. describe this map roughly for the listeners? It's a half circle trying to depict a crater with a river going through it, and there's a dam in between the river and the crater's rim, and then there's a city kind of in the middle of the crater. So like imagine a river going through a crater, and there's a dam in between the outside of the crater and the inside of the crater. The city is directly around the river. At the point where the river meets the center of the crater, that is where the city is. Oh, it'd be a shame if that dam broke. (laughs) Don't say it. Real real (laughs) humanitarian question. Yeah, let's listen. Um, So. And the dots that you're talking about are on top of the dam. On top of the dam, yes. The the AA emplacements and the garrison are all on top of this big concrete dam structure that stretches the crater's rim. Uh, Mr. Crow continues, and he says... 
At the same time we drop, the dusk lights will begin their operation. Their primary goal is to disable or destroy all anti-aircraft installments on the rim of the crater. Your secondary goal is to distract or destroy the western garrisons stationed on the crater's edge as well. On the off chance you complete both objectives, your tertiary objective is to destroy or disable the dam to flood the crater floor and the city inside. Once duty is destroyed by the moon devils, and the anti-air installments are disabled, we will head towards the western crater edge for rapid exfiltration. You will cover our retreat, and then you will retreat yourselves. The most important aspect of this operation is speed. We need to be able to exfiltrate as soon as we are finished with duty. If we give the clusters time to respond, we will be overrun and destroyed. If the AA installments are not destroyed, our pilots will not be able to reach us, and we will be trapped. Any questions so far? Just so we're clear, because this has caused some confusion in the past. The tertiary objective is to consign the 100,000 or so civilians living in this cratered area to a watery grave. It's unlikely all of them would die. Fair enough. The civilian death is secondary. The robbing them of that hydroelectric plant is primary. But, like I said, that's only a tertiary objective. We're here for the virtue. All right. Okay, moving on. Your frames have been outfitted with a flare system. If retribution shows up, send out a blue flare and we will attempt to assist during our exfiltration, if possible. The virtue sacrifice has been spotted in this area recently. We have no reason to believe it will be there today. However, if you spot sacrifice, send up a red flare immediately and abandon the mission. Whichever squad is targeted should attempt to buy time while the other squad attempts emergency exfiltration. If we send up a green flare, that means duty is finished and we're on our way to exfiltration. To summarize again, final objective outline. First, destroy the AA installments. And if you have time, destroy the western garrison and then damage or destroy the dam. There are no rules of engagement. All right. Guys looks to back at his team. Any questions? None from me. None here. No. Then I guess this is it. Do you understand if we do see sacrifice? Do you understand the instructions that have been supplied? <laughs> if you are targeted? Yes. I don't have... A lot of data on this guy. What? I take it your engagements with him in the past have not gone well. We don't fight him. You won't win. How long should we buy time for if he shows up? You won't live that long. All right. I don't think there's anything more to say. Good luck. He nods. And starts to load up. Now's yeah, a good time to figure out what... What method are you going to be using for this operation? Well, shit. Let's take a look at the old little cheat sheet here. Um, so Brian's going to walk in. He's going to be in like a suit I'm and tie. Like I'm going to be in a workbench. Work. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're I'll be in the, the little box. Hey, fellow terrorists. <laughs> Something happened. Fighters? They know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, uh, assault, deception, scientific, social, stealth, or transport. Uh, I think our only real options here are assault or stealth. Unless, you know, somebody has an idea. Mm. No, go hard, fast. Go hard, go fast. I'm down with assault, especially because we just got a cool new ability called Reavers, where if we take <laughs> team actions, we can, if we get multiple sixes, like if more than one person rolls a six, we can pool them for a critical success on the group check, which okay, is that pretty, we pretty haven't cool. Done an assault yet, and this just seemed like an assault mission, so. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm We've been so deceptive. Let's, let's just I mean, go in for it's once. It's been funny, though. It's hard to be deceptive when you're a 40-foot tall tank. Yeah, I think we go loud. Yeah. That's my thought. Okay. This makes We're you want to data. Uh, <laughs> loud, baby. So, you are dropping in. Um, you are loaded into Worthy's aircraft, and you know presumably you give him and your infantry the necessary information that they need to do this operation. I think also we'll just let Worthy know about Go for and just just as maybe says, try to keep him aboard. Don't let him jump off. You know? <laughs> uh, okay, it's Joseph, but uh, that kid, uh, 
He's the one with the big uh, shooter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, when it happens, just let us know. I'll try, but he's fields. <laughs> and he shrugs. I give him a pat on the back and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are all, with the exception of Geist, who can fly, equipped with single-use retro thrusters, which allow your frames to not pancake when they hit the ground, when jump from, drops from the air from high heights. Um, and unless you have anything to do on base, you're going to take off. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get out there. Um, go. before yeah, okay. we go, um, I think Geist will just go over to Loyal and be like, that, uh, that tertiary objective, it's pretty grim. I don't think we'll have time for it, but I just wanted to make sure before we left that you were good. Since this is a hydroelectric dam, do we have an option to just, like, somehow disable it without flooding the entire crater? Yeah, they they did say destroy or dam. For, but destroy or disable for all your objectives. How do you disable a dam? I mean, uh, if it's a hydroelectric off. dam, yeah, you can just, like, break <laughs> the machinery that generates electricity. Mm -hmm. if, the, if it's just a regular dam and the only function it has is to hold back water, then disabling it by very definition, would be flooding the city. Um, yeah, Loyal would say, I am assuming we are in agreement that if we do have the extra time and we are pushed to do something about the dam, we are disabling it at the most and not doing anything else. That'd be nice. I don't think... I don't think any of this is going to shake out the way we want it to. This is serious. This is really serious. It never does shake out the way we want it to, does it? No. No, it never does. That's war. Glad we are at least aligned on the dam. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Agreed. All right. You've got a few hours until you drop as the craft climbs into the atmosphere very high up. Um, if you have any last checks you want to do on your equipment uh, or talks or anything now's the time if not tell me how you pass the time mm -hmm. i don't think we need to do pilot load but do it anyways just check light medium or heavy um Going medium I mean, on both yeah there's no real we're not who knows anything. who knows how fucked up things could get i'm not even gonna make any yeah. promises if we had to get um, out of our mechs i think we're in some big fucking trouble <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people are taken out of their mechs without wanting to be out of them, you know? Um, it's true. So, okay. How are you passing your time? I want shots, baby. I want I want cinema. I feel like, I mean, Geist, Geist is kind of um, obsessive, so he's probably, like, just, like, for the first, like, you said it was, like, hours, right? Uh, yeah, it's going to be, like, about five hours. Okay, probably for the first, like, hour and a half, Geist is, like, checking his systems, rechecking his systems, rechecking his systems again, running diagnostics, sitting there in the cockpit, just, like, flicking levers because he's bored. Um, but, yeah, then after that, he'll probably just get around and start pacing the bay of the ship. Excellent. Hex. Hex doesn't want to leave anything to chance so he's just studying that mission map and th the very brief briefing they got excellent loyal unless told explicitly and violently to fuck off he <laughs> is staying next to gopher he's not pushing any like psychic thoughts onto him trying to calm him though it is running through his mind <laughs> he's just next to him do you want to know what he's doing what is he doing what's that guy doing it seems that he is filling the cockpit with explosives. Hmm. God damn it. Um, and <laughs> if he I says, float up to him and he's doing that, like, hey, gopher, what, what are you doing there? <laughs> you know, the cluster is, um, they can pull things out of your head if they catch you. You know that, right? Where did I wonder you if they did that to my brother before they shot him in the back of the fucking head. Bet they did. But they made, a, made him hurt real bad. They're not going to get me. Ever know. They won't get you. No, I won't let them. Okay. Thanks, Loyal. Thanks. 
Why do we bring him? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to blow up the dam. He's going to do it. Oh, Just no, say. dude. That'd be so bad if he blew up the dam. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a shame if he did our objective for us. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe as he's pacing around the uh, bay, he'll see Gopher filling his really shitty frame <laughs> with explosives, and uh, he'll see Loyal uh, talking to him, and then he'll probably wait until... Sorry, I, are you done? Like, is Loyal going to do anything else? The guy's is going to wait till Loyal, like, backs off maybe a little bit. Maybe at least out of, like, immediate conversation range, if Loyal ever does, to go try talking to him. I think when you go into training to become an empath, you get told for certain signs of a person to look out for where your skills are not effective. And this is what Gopher is right now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Loyal doesn't really know what to do, and if he sees guys coming over, he turns to him and welcomes the interruption. <laughs> Look, I've got to talk to him just for a minute. Of course, be my guest. Gopher, do you know what happened to me? Why I'm all fucked up like this? Retribution, right? Yeah, do you know what he did? Uh. Well, not in detail. I used to be with the Moon Devils, and one of the pilots I flew with was somebody that I cared about a lot more than anyone else in the world. And uh, Retribution crippled my frame and killed her right in front of me. He didn't have to do it. She was removed from the combat at that point. Her frame was wrecked, but he killed her almost as if directly to spite me and then he put me well into a coma i almost didn't survive i know what you're feeling right now and i know that you just want to go and do something and make them pay and his fist clenches a little bit as he says that but the thing I think that got me through other than, well, you know, the passage of time while I was in my coma and my physical incapabilities was looking at the big picture. All right, you want to go down there. You want to surround yourself with a pile of bodies and you want to blow yourself up. But you know what? That's what they want. They want this war to bleed the peacekeepers so dry that they have no choice but to leave. And then they win. And then the sacrifice of everybody who died in pursuit of this stupid fucking mission is so much piss in the wind. And that includes her, and that includes your brother, and it'll include you. Is that really what you want? Is that what you think your brother would want? He kind of just uh, sits there quietly tinkering with the plastic explosive. And he says, I won't lose. We won't lose. All I'm saying is that if you really want revenge, you need to live. And you need to keep going until this bitter, fucking, meaningless conflict has been fought to its very end. Do you understand? That's why you need to survive. That's how you get your revenge. And that's why I get out of bed every fucking morning. He looks you in the eye, and he says, I understand. Thank you. Don't and throw your life away. Loyal, that's a lie. <laughs> if you can hear it. I don't Geist tell doesn't Geist. know that. Geist is no. convinced that he did a good thing, and he goes back to his frame. <laughs> yeah, I let, I let Geist believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking big dub, boys. <laughs> that was easy. We got him. Uh, finally, did a good deed. <laughs> uh, <all right. laughs> so, Joseph, before I ask you how you're passing the time, you get um, many text messages from Nyla saying, where's Gopher? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I respond with... Um, uh, we're about to head into the mission. Won't be able to talk, but uh, <laughs> he's with us. He'll hang back in the ship, and we'll keep him there. Don't worry. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Going into a tunnel. Can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is, Nyla. It's very important information. 
<laughs> so how are you spending your, your hours, Joseph? I'm going to go talk to my pal Hex. All right. That's okay. You find it, you find Hex over studying the map. I'm going to walk over to Hex. Uh, Joseph extends his arm for a shake. He says, you looking a lot better there, Hex? Uh, <laughs> Joseph wouldn't notice this, but Hex is painfully aware of the delay in meeting his hand with his new <laughs> robot one. <laughs> Good to see you again, too. I'm, yes. I'm ready to get back to it. Is the arm treating you well? Not as good as the original, but I'm glad I'm at least alive. Same here. Could have mm. been worse. Couldn't stand losing you, pal. We've had a lot of drinks together. <laughs> Listen. At least one I'll, of I'll have your back here, okay? If you get into danger again, I'll be right behind. I promise. Hex uh, is a little... <laughs> taken aback at this but uh he doesn't let it show he just kind of gives a nod and says i appreciate it but watch yourself out there too that i should that i should let me could have done about this and he kind of gestures to the arm so let's see what we could do here today very true my friend let's look at the maps <laughs> joseph's gonna help you and pour over things as well all okay. right. Uh, eventually, the yellow drop light flashes. Worthy's voice comes over the speaker and says, "All pilots to drop base." And no, he's not Southern. <laughs> mm-hmm. Jesus! Would that All be fun? pilots uh, prepared to drop base. No, what is that? That's French. <laughs> Mediterranean <laughs> pilots. Hey, All pilots to drop base. Um, fuck is him. Pilots, no. Okay, well, he <laughs> says, in his voice, he says, all pilots to drop pays and prepare for engagement. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> no, I won't. I, Go listen to some Minnesota accents. And I they keep know putting I people with they Minnesotan know. accents in my games, and I always lose them in the void. It's just Tara Brea. It, Tara Brea is like that, okay? Where I should have made back? him a Southerner. We don't even have a Southerner NPC who appears regularly. Bluth? Bluth. Yeah, Bluth. No, well, he's, that's a different type of Southern. Oh, that's true. He, he's so well, you know. Yeah. He's antebellum. Yeah. Um, All right. Let's get it. Let's do it. All right. Prepare you get in, and eventually the drop light turns green. Uh, and then Worthy's voice comes through once again, his voice, and it says, Moon Devils have dropped. Good luck out there, Dusk Lights. Oh, that was it. Yeah. yeah. I, like I, I got you it. Know, <laughs> So, what goes through each of your minds before you drop? Just like a brief impression. Geist just... I feel like Geist has developed a sort of combat zen. It's almost like meditation, except that he doesn't have the sort of thoughtfulness to do something like that intentionally. So he just, like, takes a breath in, takes a breath out, just focuses on the dials and the rattling of the ship, and he just clears his mind because everything he does while he's on the ground is basically reflexive. X is just concerned about making it out of this one alive. Loyal is thinking about Gopher. Joseph's also thinking about Gopher, but after noticing the explosives, he's thinking, how, how could I use this? <laughs> we probably should have sabotaged his frame. Thinking about <laughs> it now, but it's too late. <laughs> oh, how could we use this? <laughs> well, Indeed. If you do that, he's going to go down with a parachute and a combat knife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. It's time for the engagement roll. Yeah. My friends. Ooh. High dice. High dice. Ooh. You get one die for sheer luck. Yeah. Oh. You get an additional die for it being a bold move. Yes. Ooh. You do not exploit any vulnerabilities of the target. Not really. We're dropping um, on top of their anti-aircraft guns. That's like the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have minus one for tier difference because this is a tier two you're attacking in this case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't really have any external support because you and the du- the Moon Devils are kind of doing separate missions here. Um, and there's not any other factors, but I will hear them if you have any pr- propositions for an extra die. Right now, you're one dice. Even. Yeah. So just to figure this out, we are taking out anti-aircraft things and also the green dots, right? That's our yeah. like main uh, plan. The, the red dots are primary. Yeah, the most important thing is you take out the red dot AA guns. The green dots are like the frames stationed there and the infantry they're like 
underground bunker. That's secondary, and the dam is the third objective. And Moon Devils currently are going after the Virtue first? Yeah, they're going in the center of the city. They're going to be over Okay, here. gotcha. Yeah. Understood. Mm-hmm. I am. Um, I don't. I can't think of anything else that would give us an edge here. So I think we're literally rolling one die, and uh, that's a coin flip. You know, there's a this reason it's called a die. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it kills you. <laughs> oh, I don't want to start off in a desperate position today, guys. Somebody, somebody with it? good luck. Yeah, who's feeling lucky? Who can who can give me that four, five, or I mean, six? I would take a four or five. About it? Hex getting hit, like you know, bombed is a, an unlikely event, so that's kind of likely lucky in a way. So, I'm gonna I'll roll it. What am I rolling? Yeah, that's true. I love one this. D6. It's literally 1d6. And if it's a one or two or a three, we are fucked. Oh, that's easy. Four. Oh, it's a five. Five. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll take it. I'll fucking take it. We could oh, not damn, have hoped for better. Holy shit. Let's so, Vegas, <laughs> as you drop your frames, careen through the cloud cover fast, leaving Worthy's craft far above you. Droplets of vapor streak across your cameras and trail your mech like a comet's trail. You breach into the sunlight of the troposphere and you see the crater beneath you. From here you see the moon devil splash down, a four-square formation surrounding the kneeling frame of duty. Before you can get a proper look at it, the distortion of a haze field blooms, leaving just streaks and glows of indistinct violence. Um, I'm going to create some clocks now. Not by create, I mean show you. Okay. I've shared these clocks with you. They were going to make a little more sense once I describe some things. Um, as you drop loyal, your cockpit lights up with a targeting warning. Too late. Uh, a beam of concentrated plasma clips one of your retro thrusters, disabling it. Um, you feel a psychic presence, distinct and fierce, directed at you. Uh, looking down as the uh, vapor comes off your cameras, you see its source. Uh, perched on top of a large satellite dish is egg white. One of the hyenas you let get away at the refinery. Egg white. Uh, egg white. <laughs> Beside him is the final member of the hyenas, their leader, Cackle, scrambling into position while hefting a large launcher. A number of generic frames likewise have begun to emerge from the interior of the RIMS facility preparing themselves for combat. Um, perhaps more importantly for you, Loyal, is that if you don't find some way to repair or mitigate the loss of your thruster, you'll be dead once you hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs>